And so um, the other thing I ask people to do, and this is so important, you need to, depending upon where they're going inappropriately, I like to create a safe room because there's a lot of stress in the home when an animal is, is not using its litter box. What you need to do is create a safe room where the cat has its litter box, its food, its bed, its toys, and this is its safe room. This is, if there's an accident, you know it's confined to one room. Everybody can kind of relax. But what you also want to do is you want to, that gives you an opportunity to go through the house and go, okay, now where else did he go? And you want to treat that with a good enzyme type cleaner. Because if you don't clean with an enzyme type cleaner or something that's really going to absorb that odor, what's going to happen is the cat's going to go, hmm, oh yeah, that's where I went. And sometimes what people will do is they'll use Lysol or some kind of disinfectant first and then they use an enzyme cleaner and what happens, any residue of the disinfectant kills the enzyme and then the enzyme product doesn't work. So the best way to treat a urine stain in a carpet mm -hmm. is flush with water, soak it up, flush with water, soak it up, then put down your enzyme type product, put a colander over the top or put something, I put a, a, an old towel so mm -hmm. that if I walk in that area, um, and then let it dry naturally. Then after it's dried naturally, because you got to give that enzyme time to work, right. Once that has done that, then you can go back with your shampoo and use whatever you want to shampoo your rug. So but you, enzyme first. Enzyme first. Clear water um, and just rinse that area, saturate it as much as you can, and pull up, you know, dilute it as much as you can, and then use your enzyme cleaner. The same is true when you're washing, like let's say it's on a rug or on bedding. You need to pre-soak that bedding with an enzyme like OxyClean or sure. something that's an enzymatic. You can't just wash it with your regular detergent because there, there's going to be a residue left behind and enough that their sense of smell is so much greater, um, they go right to that spot. And I had that happen with a carpet. Um, my cat was sniffing, and right after my cat was done sniffing, my dog came over and sniffed, and we had had a puppy visit, and they all found the same spot. That I had just that I had thought I had treated appropriately, right. and so I needed to retreat it. Sure. So this is when you're creating that safe room. That's a um, a retraining. Don't look at this as punishment. You can't punish a cat for going elsewhere because there's something he doesn't like about. Well, his let's box. talk about that. You know, obviously um, people have done that in the past. They they become very frustrated because it's it, it, you know it it is frustrating to have right. your cat pee or poop outside of the box and then they'll just like they do sometimes with dogs they'll bring the cat over and they'll you know bad kitty bad kitty and they rub just, their nose yeah. in it and then I, I did have somebody they rubbed their nose in it and then they and then they told me I, we went and threw him in his litter box and I'm like well that really made him afraid of the litter box so so you have to understand that once the cat has um, had an accident unless you catch him in the act if you catch him in the act you're gonna go kitty no 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 grab them and take them to the box and then when they use the box, then you're going to reward them. Right. But then you need to figure out why isn't my cat, you know, you have to become the detective. Do you have cats that are marauding outside, that are spraying on the outside of your house that could be causing your cat to become territorial? Um, is your cat spayed and neutered? You know, Joni, 90% yeah. of spraying issues, both males and females spray, 90% of spraying issues can be solved by something as simple as spaying and neutering. But even if your pet is spayed and neutered, if you have outside cats, mm -hmm. that can cause that territorial issue and your cat may start marking territory. Right. Right. That's why when somebody visits, if they have cats, they set their bag down, they smell like cats. If your cat feels real threatened, your cat may spray on that person's so, luggage. So stress obviously creates some issues for cats. The stress organ for cats is their bladder. Okay. And if they are unhappy with anything in their environment, it can cause them to go off their litter box. Right. And something as simple as, I'm not being played with enough. I'm not getting any attention. Um, I'm bored all the time. What and about you know, going in and outside? Oh, heavens. Going in and out, that's extending a cat's territory. So the cat goes outside and goes, wow, look at all this wide open space. Then they come back in the house and they go, hmm, I better make sure everybody knows this is mine. And they start marking. Mm. And you know, when you let your cat outdoors, they are prone to getting fleas and ticks, and then you create the door dasher that, oh, it's, it's October or November, and you want Kitty to come back in. Mm -hmm. And so every opportunity Kitty gets, they become door dashers. Right. And so the best place, the safest place for your cat is leave them indoors. Um, if you have outside cats, contact us. Trap the cats. Talk to your neighbors. 
remind them in the city of Oshkosh, there is a leash law for cats. It's mm -hmm. against the law to let your cat run at large. Mm -hmm. um, that's old, kind of old school to let, put the cat out at night. Yeah, you know, I agree. They really, you know, most cats, you show them the door and they're backpedaling like, ah! yeah. Uh, they don't want to go so out. So you can meet all their needs indoors. You can meet all their needs indoors. With toys, within, uh, with perches, window perches, a uh, bird bath outside the, you know, the window, a bird feeder, something to entertain them. Play with them, something as simple as a laser light. We need to meet their needs. And the biggest need that we need to meet for them is making their bathroom as pleasant for them um, so that they want to use that bathroom. Let's talk about, now, now obviously as a humane society, we encourage people to consider alternatives to declawing. Okay. However, can declawing have any kind of uh, aversion to kitties not using the I've box? had calls where, you know, there's a lot of cats, Tony, that have been declawed that seem to be managing just fine. Mm -hmm. Um, but occasionally I will get the call where my cat was using its litter box and then we had it declawed and th that's painful. It's an actual amputation and so when that cat is healing or maybe later in life uh, arthritis can set in, there can be some problems. So that also, I don't want to dig in that if I have my feet are sore. So it can cause some aversion to the litter box and that's why again you want to use a soft substrate in the boxes and you want to keep it extremely clean and you don't want to, you know, mound it up so that, that there's a big area there. So even like a, a gravel litter, because obviously that's sold as well. Um, I don't the know if we have any here. No, I didn't put any yeah. gravel litter out. The non-absorbent, um, I, I had a client that used the gravel and she would stir it every day. <laughs> and I went to her house and I got to tell you, it was day five of the stirring. Yeah. She would yeah. take out the clumps, but yeah. you know, that she could, but then she would stir it and it was so... Uh, yeah. It was just yeah, horrible. It's not absorbent. It's, um, you know, I have a gravel driveway. I, I wouldn't take off my shoes and walk on that. Yeah, you know, and, I, so. and we do use it here for very small kittens. Well, you need to use it for kittens because, very small kittens, because right. kittens, here again, kittens want to play in their litter box. You want to see them digging around and playing. And I know that to some people that's um, not a, a good thing. But it is because they're enjoying their litter box. It's part of the training. They're not going to play, play in it for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. But in that box should be clean. You shouldn't care if they're playing in it. If right. you're keeping it clean, um, if you have a toddler and, you, and they go in the bathroom and they're playing in the toilet. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully that toilet children, <laughs> children are Children are going to do that. And right. so you have to look at it in that same venue, that sure. cleanliness. That is the number one thing for cats is they are fastidious about their behavior, so we need to keep it as clean as we sure. possibly can. And, and the reason that we use the gravel litter here for small kittens, and I just want to clarify that, is because obviously kittens very often groom themselves and clean themselves. And with a clumpable litter, if that kitty right. is too tiny, right. um, and, you know, well, they, they could. Right. The other thing that happens here at the shelter is in their cages or even in the galleries, right. they play in the water. Then they go in the litter box right. and they get clumps on their feet and then they're ingesting all of that right. and that can be very hazardous. So that's there are times that you need to use a gravel litter right. but for convenience and uh, disposability um, the, to me the scoopable litters are the, right. are the way right. to go. So let me ask you this Cheryl, so success rate with someone who's had issues with um, kitties, uh, pretty good? I mean, that have an issue with the litter box? I mean, is it doable? Call right away. Okay. Call right away. The biggest problem is my kitty's had a litter box problem for a year. That's too late. Yeah. Your kitty has a litter box issue twice. Call. Call. Go visit our website um, and, and do those things. Yeah, there's, there's a lot more, Joni, that we could really cover with litter box issues. There's a lot of information on our website. Uh, that people can, uh, sure. they can call our hotline and uh, we'll have that information available to people. Um, but the most important thing is keep it clean, put yourself in your cat's place. What would you want to use as a bathroom if you were a cat? Yeah. And uh, hopefully this will help people that are having an issue and or people that are going to be bringing a new kitty into their home. So, um, so until next time, happy, happy tales, tales to you. you.